Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some spikes and foil cards. You may own some of these. It's actually more likely you own some of these than not, given what they are. So we will start with Chameleon Colossus. Very interesting creature. It is a changeling, so it's a dragon, it's a dinosaur. If dinosaurs ever take off in, let's say, modern, you're going to need changelings because they trigger the dinosaur effects without costing like a bazillion so i'm not too surprised and long term this is an interesting speculation because it's also a pirate it's a little bit it's every creature type which makes it tribal and it's not bad it's a 4-4 four -four. and then it can pump itself up and go as a finisher so the dinosaurs will love this card because they make they give them haste, they make them bigger, and this card just doubles in size, and you pretty much have the two double green because that's how you casted it, right? Love the card. I've always thought the card was very powerful, and I'm not too surprised to see the recent card spike on it. All right, next one, Fungasaur. I kind of put it here just to iterate that if edition is spiking as a set so fungusaur there are stories of people trading black lotuses for fungusaur fungusaur actually was considered the best creature in green at the time and there wasn't even you know a second best it was fungusaur a bust that is exactly what you wanted it to drop on turn four this was during alpha and beta of course i'm pretty sure it's fungusaur is this the same one yeah, I'm almost certain this is the one that from Alpha and Beta that got reprinted, the 2-2. I remember it has a very weak power. But even this in foil has been spiking. It went from like a dollar to four dollars in foil. As we see older and older foils get purchased up, it's a good idea to not trade them. I would say any 8th edition, 9th edition, 7th edition, especially Invasion or older hold on to them for dear life because eventually they are all going to be worth something. So the concept of bulk foil, if it's older than, let's say, 8th edition, no longer exists because the potential of those bulk cards being quite valuable is much, much higher now than it, be, it used to be. So what is a common foil elf, land war elf worth in 7th edition? 25 bucks, right? So you look at today's card market, and then you look at the past card market. I don't ever expect maybe Liliana of the Last Hope. Let's talk about the rotation right now. Nahiri probably is never going to hit 25 again. So it's Liliana of the Last Hope and maybe some random Aldrazi card. That's it. There's not many cards printed today that will ever hold a $25 price point after rotation and that's just because too much of it is in print and the cards themselves are not as good for eternal playable an elf that generates one green is always going to be good i don't see why we can't have it we mana generation was destroyed mana uh, our land destruction was gone so a lot of our card hate is mostly gone like color hate like uh blue the green life force the death grasp and all those gloom so at the very end of the day i just don't see much movement uh, now cavern of souls let's explain why this card is going up in foil it's in the human deck you play the ancient zygots and then you play your four cavern of souls naming human and you have eight land that produce any mana of any color. And then Cavern of Souls, for instance, you can actually, on the flip side, you can produce colorless mana should you need that. So Cavern of Souls is a very good card. I disagree that they should print it as they should have printed it as a mythic. I think that was not a good that was not a good move. I felt like they should have kept Cavern of Souls as a rare, and then its price would go down a lot. Its price has barely moved. But interesting experiment nonetheless to see a card 
where it's been reprinted, but the price has not moved. If anything, it's going up in price for the original ones. I like it. The human deck, it might be the real deal. Uh, it might not be the real deal. At the end of the day, we'll see. It's got to put up more results than it has in the past. But it's doing pretty good. Um, it's doing pretty good. So I would say, yeah, well, let's see where Calvin of Souls goes up. Now, Crop Rotation. So Crop Rotation is quite an interesting card. As a foil, it is $106. But even non-foil, it is $148. Which is very, very good. I remember playing Crop Rotation into Guy's Cradle. Such, I, I mean, it's just so OP to be able to go Guy's Cradle whenever, to have four, eight, eight, essentially eight copies of Guy's Cradle and a bunch of elves and you're off to your races. So I'm not surprised to see this as a very expensive card in EDH. But that's just it. Like Fatal Puss is the exception, but if you go through the history of the current Magic sets, not very much, not very many good stuff. Uh, that can ever hit $100 in foil. Even Liliana of the Last Hope, which is the best card that's rotating out and is a mythic, a chase mythic, it can never compare to crop rotation. And that is the sad reality of the current state of MTG Finance and Standard. There's just nothing of value. There would never be a, another crop rotation. The $100 plus common in foil, that's insane, right? Anyway, talking about foils, Mox Diamond has been on many people's radar to buy them out. This is the only foil Mox Diamond from the Vault Relics. It is a beautiful card. I actually, I believe I have the playmat on this one. Relics was $34.99 MSRP. Let's say your store doubles at $70. This would have been a tremendously good buy because the buy list on Mox Diamond is equal multiply multiplier of the msrp and that is the type of we don't have that anymore we don't have easy products to say all right crop rotation foil that's going to be hit a hundred dollars or mox diamond that's going to hit 200 today's products are much less valuable um partially because there's too many of them and secondly because the cards themselves are not very good uh, I played Magic during beta, and I have seen Magic ebb and flow in terms of power level. I played during Homelands. N Trust me, no one knew, no one thought Homelands was good. We all knew Homelands sucked. I played during Fall Fallen Empires. That was also bad. And then Alliance was very, very underwhelming as well. I mean, you do have Force of Will, but at the time, it was underwhelming. Not Force of Will, the entire Alliance set, and a lot of people quit. So when you talk about the longevity of Magic, even something like this, Pr Price of Glory, which is meant to me, it's $11 foil uncommon. The health of a set is determined by its uncommons and commons, especially what point, what foil pricing they are. Invasion, you could have said, was a terrible set until recently. And why is that? Opt. Opt foil is 40, 50 bucks at common. That changes the expected value quite a bit. And opt regular is like three, four dollars now from like five cents. So sets that were not good may see some one card may see EDH play, and that really helps the entire set. I just don't see that happening with today's standard sets because the power level overall is quite weak. And even something like Invasion or Odyssey, not much of it exists. If you compare it to today, probably one tenth or one twentieth or maybe even one hundredth, maybe even one thousandth of a of amount exists for Odyssey and Odyssey foil than a current uh, Fatal Push foil. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.